Hi, welcome back to another edition of Lippers Fund Flows Insight. My name is Tom Rosine. Thanks for joining me today. I'll be reporting flows for the week ended Wednesday, April 12, 2017. Initially, I talk about conventional fund business, uh, you know, meaning just open-end funds, but later on we'll talk about uh, ETF flows as well. We actually saw about $2.4 billion in outflows. The second consecutive week we've seen outflows uh, for the con conventional fund business. And this is after we learned of uh, lower than expected non-farm payroll reports. It was in the 90,000 range. I think people were expecting about 185,000. Pretty significant change. A lot of people aren't too concerned about that just because of the seasonality and the uh, cold weather that was uh, out in the east. Uh, so really, I think it, it, people expected that. But in addition, well, obviously we saw geopolitical concerns rise. Uh, we had the uh, uh, strike, uh, airstrike in Syria. Uh, then we also uh, saw some uh, saber rattling uh, out of North Korea. And then uh, last but not least, I think people were really anticipating, uh, you know, waiting to, you know, just sitting on their hands, waiting to hear what they hear for a Q1 earnings reports. I think that's a very important issue. And at the end of the uh, week, the, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday, we actually saw a, a flight to capital or a flight to safety, a safe haven place. Certainly we saw a rise in uh, gold prices and uh, also we saw a treasury uh, rally and yields drop a little bit. So I think that played through to what the flows happened. Let's take a look at, on a, a macro basis to see how these flows, this news impacted our flows for the week. If we take a look at equity funds, they lost about $1.2 billion dollars. Taxable bond funds just saw about $100 million in outflows. Muni bond funds though saw a, a really a striking high amount of money come into their uh, into their coffers, about $1.5 billion. Uh, best flows for the open-end universe uh, that we had. And money market funds saw about $2.6 billion in outflows. Well, let's take a look at the macro breakouts. Let's take a look at equity funds first and see how this played out. Basically, we saw about a 0.01% return. So really, we did see plus high performance. Again, people very concerned. Second week in three, we've seen plus high performance. Again, 0.01% is really not a lot to talk about. We saw for the third consecutive week outflows this week to the tune of about $1.2 billion. And how that broke out, if we take a look at it, domestic equity funds, as has been the trend for the 15th consecutive week, saw outflows this week of about $1.7 billion. And if we take a look at non-domestic equity funds, they actually saw inflows, but it was just a little bit of, of money as far as uh, you know comparisons go, about $500 million net new money coming to that group. One, uh, it's the first week in three that we've actually seen a net inflows, and they had a return of about 0.12%. Now, if we break this down even further, we take a look at the large cap group. Large cap funds has been the uh, pariah for the last probably year and a half. Saw additional outflows, this time to the tune of about $654 million, and international equity funds actually took in money, about $721 million dollars. I think people were relieved to hear the uh, ECB was not planning on raising its rates, so that was a little bit of a rally point for that. Well, let's take a look now at our equity ETF universe. For the second week in three, we've seen uh, uh, inflows. This time, about $2.5 billion came into their coffers. iShares Core S&P 500 saw about $1.5 billion. iShares Core MSCI EFA saw about $760 million. And if we look at the bottom of the, uh, the barrel, we see iShares Russell 2000, about $1.9 billion in outflow, and Spider S&P 500 losing about $1.5 billion in flows uh, for the week. Let's take a look now at our fixed income universe to see how that panned out. Basically, for the first week in four, four we saw outflows. This time, though, only to the tune of $135 million. So it was really kind of a whole week there. Uh, and I think people, you know, were really actually, I told you there was a flight, flight to safety. So I think there was a risk off trade going on and a risk averse trade coming back in. And we saw government treasuries taking about $150 million. And when we take a little deeper dive, we actually saw corporate investment grade uh, debt funds actually lose money. Money. But if we take a deeper diet, loan participation funds, which is part of that subgroup, basically saw $375 million of inflows. That's a 22nd consecutive week that they've seen inflows. And certainly, this is after we heard that the Fed decided to unwind its balance sheet. And so that was a concern that that might actually, you know, have a little pressure uh, on, uh, you know, maybe inflationary, but a little pressure on uh, yields as well as we move down the chain. Now, at the bottom of the group was the flexible portfolio funds. Again, a little bit of risk off there, $199 million in 
P&L flows. Let's take a look now at the ETF universe to see what happened in the fixed income universe there. $1.2 billion of inflows, fourth consecutive week. They've seen net new money coming to the group. At the top of the group was iShares Core U.S. Aggregate Bond Fund, took in about $183 million. iShares 3-7 to seven, uh, Treasury Bond ETFs, so about $160 million in inflows. And at the very bottom, as has been for quite some time, Spider Barclays High Yield Bond Fund ETF saw about $423 million in outflows. Now let's turn our attention to the Muni bond fund side. And I said it was really quite a big week for them. $1.5 billion, third, uh, third uh, week in four we've seen inflows, but this was the best uh, inflows that we've seen since January 9th, 2013. It's the fourth consecutive week they have actually seen plus side returns as well, this time to the tune of 0.35%. High yield muni bond funds took in about 598 million, and this is a 14th consecutive week they've seen inflows. Now, interesting enough, this could be just you know people getting around tax time and deciding to put more money in muni bond funds, but there has been a lot of the pundits out there basically saying that people are maybe getting a little concerned that the tax reform promised by uh, President Trump will not be as robust as we had previously thought. So people might be betting uh, that in fact they're going to have to do a little bit more tax sheltering than maybe they had thought uh, four, five, six weeks ago. So that might be the tune there. When we take a look now at money market funds, we see outflows about five, uh, about $2.6 billion. Fifth week and sixth we've seen outflows. We expect this during the tax season, kind of up and down and up and down. But how it broke out, taxable money market funds, so about $2.6 billion in outflows. And if we took a look at taxes at money market funds, they took in about $60 million, so not a lot. When we take a look at the, the taxable money market funds, so we see kind of a, a, di a different trend. $2.6 billion actually came in on the institutional side. And I'm sorry, I actually saw outflows on the institutional side and 1.5 on the retail side. Let me back up. Actually, $1.5 billion of in inflows into the uh, institutional side and about $4.1 billion in outflows on the retail side. So that was where the story, and that's how we got to $2.6 billion in outflows. Well, that brings it, us to an end. Uh, actually, I think what, what it is is all eyes are going to be on earnings. We are Q1 earnings reporting season. Actually, there was some good numbers for some of the banks out there. And th if we take a look at the proprietary, proprietary research team here at uh, Thomson Reuters, we see that there is supposed to be growth in earnings uh, this quarter. And I think people are waiting to see if that uh, actually pushes through uh, into the reporting season. And then also, they're expecting maybe better guidance than they've had in the past as well. So all eyes will be on the earnings. And uh, if I haven't covered the areas that you actually wanted to get a particular look at, you can go to our, our site, www.lipperusfundflows.com, or you can wait until next week when one of our analysts will talk about the flows trends of the week. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for joining me. My name is Tom Rosine, wishing you the best in your wealth planning and creation. Thank you.